think people are just willing to uh, change things up and put themselves in different situations. And I think the one thing that New Yorkers won't put up with is bad food. This is Taste. I'm your host, Matt Rodbard. Today in the show, welcome in Andy Barragani. I just love catching up with Andy. And really, we just have a, a wide open conversation about all things about New York City restaurants, about his cookbook, The Cook You Want to Be, about winning the James Beard Award for that book. And really, you know, he doesn't have a project to promote. We're not talking about a new TV show or anything like that. It's just him and I catching up, talking about recipes, talking about our, our breakfast at Michael's that we had before. And really, I, I just love Andy's presence. I love catching up with him. And I hope you enjoy this conversation. Andy Barragani, welcome to This Is Taste. How the hell are you, man? I'm doing great on this uh, Tuesday morning. We had such a cool morning. We went over to Michael's, had some breakfast. Michael's in the building. I mean, do people, uh, for people who, for listeners who don't know, Michael's is a iconic restaurant in Midtown. Uh, it's a place to definitely to be seen it's it's uh, <laughs> uh you'll have a lot of well i think it was a mixed maybe a mixed yeah. crowd this morning but mostly mostly business it was <laughs> definitely guys who work at jeffrey's talking about the guggenheim being a little too narrow in scope yes. which is hilarious yes um and Mark, michael mccarty was 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 touching tables and I, I loved catching up with you there i hadn't seen you in a little while i know it's been a while you have to get him on the podcast Oh, we're really? building and figuring it out. I mean, we're, we're we've been we're gonna email. We've been emailing. I think by the time this airs, we will have recorded uh, with Michael. I'm I'm very hopeful. I want to talk to you. I haven't we like, caught up with you face to face in a while, and and like got a lot to cover. A lot um, to cover. You won a James Beard Award. You're uh, working on some new projects. You're you're just around, and um, but also not around because you're kind of private. I, <laughs> I, I am, uh, well, I am maybe, uh, if anybody asks me a question, I'm, I'm, I'm most likely will, will answer well, it, yeah. but, uh, you're, you're a human being and a very I, nice but, person, but I'm not, I'm not showcasing maybe every aspect of my life, but <laughs> no, there's been, uh, I'll, I'll give some big updates. Uh, I did win a James Beard award, um, That's last well June, I, uh, was terribly emotional and cried. I think there's a video out there somewhere. I was in the uh, room. It was amazing. It was a beautiful speech she gave. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm engaged, so I am getting yeah. married. Mazel. I feel like I haven't said that uh, out, and people have uh, been asking, like, oh, how are you and your boyfriend? I'm like, well, he's, he's technically, not technically, he's my, your, he's my fiance, fiance now. Uh, West Coast, East Coast wedding. Are we, are we, we Oh, New York City wedding. Oh. We are doing a city wedding. What, what time of year? April, so <laughs> oh, it's, <laughs> it's shit. we're recording this in the last day of January, so yeah, yeah, yeah it's coming, coming up. up. We we have a lot of uh, the pieces yeah. set and figured out, and uh, uh, I have a I have a very very big family, and he has a uh, a smaller family, and but we're all coming together, and um, I'm I'm hoping my Persian family will be gentle and won't dominate too much. You guys um, have editorial juice yes you're in the business Where, where's the exclusive going you got it you got it i'm not gonna say okay, but you're confirming there is an exclusive <laughs> but wedding there possibly will be more information out there i love it i'm just teasing you for um, me. i'm teasing i'm excited about the food some uh some some friends of mine that uh, you're very that you you know if jeremiah and fabian are yeah we'll be doing the food so Wonderful. i'm very happy and they're just gonna be opening family. contra again pretty My soon no bar contra. The, the new the new space yeah yeah, yeah. Um, We're always opening up something. Yeah, too. I love that you hired those guys. They're a wonderful connection to you. And yeah, I've 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 been lucky to know them for so long, ten plus years now. And I I I, I wrote about Wild Air. Oh, I've yeah. done three pop ups with them at the yeah. restaurants. Um, it's it's a family. Feels like a vibe yes. like that. Yeah. Speaking of restaurants, I'd like to just get a sense. Um, where are you going right now? You're in New York. You live in New York. There's you're traveling a lot as well. Like, what's exciting you restaurant wise? Mm, okay, so I've been eating out a lot uh, in in the city. Um, just recently, I went to Bar Miller. So yeah. that is a uh, the new restaurant from the uh, Rosella uh, Rochella team Rosella team, um, and it was amazing. Yeah. It was I think like I don't typically go for anything that's uh, 
18 courses or anything like that, but this was just the most incredible omakase that I've had that I could remember. I mean, they really did an incredible job. Um, beautiful space designed by uh, Anna Polonsky. Oh, wonderful. Um, oh, great. Yeah. And uh, no, I mean, there were so many delicious dishes. I mean, I just to mention a few of them, there was a hand roll made with uh, toro and chopped, I think, white kimchi. That was so delicious. Um, a uh, hand roll with uh, main uni, uh, Exo sauce that they made in house uh, and trout roe and and shiso. Wow, um, and that's a lot going that's on. A lot love, going on. I love that. And you know what? That was a lot going on, and it was definitely like a, a bigger hand roll, but it was so delicious. Um, and then this, uh, they had a corn ice cream that was. I mean, just it was perfectly tempered. It was like a, just gradually melting and topped with caviar, and it was this perfect. Balance. Like this, this sounds kind of that 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 shiso uh, or perilla uni row dish reminds me. There was that place down on Hudson Street that Bourdain loved. That was a Jap. Yes, what, um, do you remember the name of that place? Uh, they used to, that was like one of the signatures and the uni and XO. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 It remi- yeah. It's because uh, I missed that place. I, I, I wish I remembered the name, but it's uh, this bar Miller. It's lining up to be one of the big restaurants of the year. Yes, for sure. I went. Uh, so I went there. I went to uh, Tolo. Um, had a delicious meal there um i've been to i mean some also i'm just going to a lot of places that aren't necessarily new i i go to aggie's counter a lot yep. uh i've uh, been to kind of the 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 this wave of neo french bistro of sorts uh, the 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 clods yep. liberty well there's one Claude. Claude. <laughs> liberty the, the clods the clods <laughs> wannabe <laughs> yes <laughs> we'll call it that uh libertine yep um I've been to Superiority Burger multiple yeah, times. Yeah. Love it there. Yeah. Which uh, I was just there last week. And Brooks is like, there's there. tables available. He's obviously there and and very gracious. But listen, go there. There's tables available. January might be a little slow for them, which is odd to me. So that idea that you can't get into Superiority, that's untrue. Go no, to the Definitely restaurant. go. It will be such a memorable meal. I've also been going to... Uh, this was back in November. I I have this tradition to kind of treat myself on my birthday, yeah. and um, I went to Sushi Yasuda, which is yeah. you know that far from here. And um, I went to Love in Madison Park because I hadn't tried the new, their the new iteration or newish, I guess, um, and had an amazing That's the plant based menu. Yeah, right? yep, the plant based menu, all yep. plant based, and it was incredible. Yeah, yeah. it was. Unbelievable. I I um, had been to a handful of really, you know, yeah. let's say fancy restaurants, yeah. and that one uh, blew me away. Amazing. Um, Sailor, have you been there? Oh, yes. <laughs> How can I? <laughs> I was I wondering. I forgot. Sailor I, seems like it's a lot of people are going there. April Bloomfield. I, I don't even know what's wrong with me. I But uh, I went, yeah, I went to Sailor last week. And um, I mean, for anybody who comes from the food world and anybody who just loves food or lives in New York, um, or they, 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 you must be familiar with with April Bloomfield and 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 her food. And um, I don't know about you, but I was I was very much excited to hear that you know she was coming back yeah. to the city and and to, to work on it with with with, with Gabe Stolman. And and I went and um, I mean. I had a very, very delicious meal. It's a tight space too. Yeah. It's intimate. And, and, you know, I, I was a huge fan of the Breslin when she was, you know, doing special dinners there. And I, I really loved the, her cooking there. And mm-hmm. it sounds like it's definitely a return to form at Sailor. Oh, for sure. I mean, th- even the descriptions on the menu or the, 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 uh, the the dishes the the name of the dishes are so understated and you know there's one dish called um, uh, green toast <laughs> and uh, it comes out and uh, it, it, you can't see that it's exactly cut for you on a diagonal but it's 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 kind of perfectly uh, doused in this green sauce made with I don't know how many herbs and you can you could taste the kind of tar- the tarragon and the parsley and then pretty much fully covered with um, finely grated, uh, almost feathery Parmesan. And um, the bread is obviously uh, has a perfectly char but cushiony interior. And uh, I had uh, the profiteroles as mm. a dessert. And I don't have the biggest sweet tooth, but I'll, you know, I'll always have yeah. like a dessert. And uh, it was profiteroles with um, salted caramel yeah. sauce. And 
wonderful classic uh you know end of end of meal yeah i love a profiterole i fucking i always miss i love a profiterole and i think it's we can uh, say a profit roll we can pray profit rolls too (laughs) now um let me ask you i had you on two years ago uh right around the time the cook you want to be was published and i just want to ask you andy it's been two years how it hasn't been two years how long it's been it's been well, actually, April, because uh, we're we're recording this in 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 February. Actually, you know, so it's 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 all it's almost going to be two years. A It'll year, be two years, ten in, months. Yes, yes. I, I am <laughs> I am rounding up. Um, I'm thinking seasons. Why? I think that's why I'm thinking it's in it was in April, May twenty fourth. It was it was a late. It was, it was the, later. Yeah, okay. Late. All right. We'll be fair. It was um uh, uh, it was a year and nine months ago. But anyways, <laughs> we had you on the podcast in April, and I want to get a sense. How have you you changed over this time as a cook? Uh, have I changed as a cook? Uh, absolutely. I think, um, you know, with with my my first book, it was so important for me to think about, uh, I mean, so many different aspects, but think about the reader and the home cook and really empowering the home cook. Uh, and so really passing the kind of fundamental lessons that I've learned, that I've learned throughout my life as a cook. So while I very much uh, use those techniques and those ingredients to this day, I think a big part of that book and and who I am as a as a as a cook as a human is to continue evolve. So I, I like to think that I definitely have evolved and changed as a cook, um, and especially because like I'm writing another book, so yeah, <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to give the same things uh, and provide the same tricks. It, yeah. There's definitely going to be new information, new technique, and uh, obviously it's a good new segue recipes. Segue into this. I was kind of kind of dancing around that, but you are working on a, a new book, and it will come out. We won't, you know, we won't hold you to any kind of time frame because that's just rude. I don't need to like get on like you for like a <laughs> deadline. But, like, what are you thinking about in this early phase about how this this cookbook? Will, will be articulated into the public. Yes. So I, I think, you know, the first book was, I think with any kind of in creative endeavor, especially with like your very first book, it, it, it took so much out of me. And I think part of it is because it was so personal. You know, I, I put so many of my, my memories and, and stories in that book. I think for the, for the next book, I knew I wanted to write a book that we really touched on the idea of, of of comfort, the idea of nostalgia, and what that means, you know, to me as a as a cook and as an individual. What does it mean uh, as to home cooks in this country? So uh, I really want to kind of uh, my next book will be more about uh, comfort food and, yeah. and what that means in America. So okay, I'll so give you that's that's the kind of premise I'll say. It's really really smart, and I think you're so it's articulate that comfort food is not a monolith. I mean, we could definitely look at like FoodNetwork.com putting comfort food, and you're gonna get a very specific thing. But that's not how food is uh, right now. And for you, when you're looking at a TOC, and I imagine you've like thought of TOC. And oh yeah. Thought of oh no, I have a TOC. <laughs> you got the TOC. All right. A uh, little industry jargon that's table of contents when you write cookbooks you start with kind of a framing of your recipe list so for for our audience just for a little teaser like what are some of the a couple of the the comforting dishes that you're thinking about oh god should i pull out my let's get out let's get out the google box i'll I'll, I'll say this you know i think something that i also want to say is that i feel very fortunate and grateful that people you know trust me and they turn to me for for my writing my recipes and past videos. And uh, I think while people might look at me as maybe an authority figure in food, I I never have held myself to that. And so when I wrote my first book and with the second book, I'm always more interested in the exploration of of, of an idea rather than providing uh, a specific answer. You know, I want, that's always more interesting. I want people to be curious. That's always the kind of word I go back to. Um, So the idea of comfort, some comfort. Yeah, all right. right. I'm like, I'll tell you, this is a teaser. So these names, these uh, ideas. Listener, like we're literally going to the Google Docs right now. Yeah, we're going to the uh, Google Docs. Which is the best. I mean, I'm sure you, you look at this often because that is the best way to think about a cookbook is is having this recipe mm-hmm. list in front of you. And And I'll say this. Any recipe developers there, <laughs> be careful. Don't don't be don't be taking this. So I'll only be naming a few. Yeah, name a few. Um, no, no spoilers. I think uh, I'm going to give you some really specific ones. Yes. Uh, a no flip cauliflower tortilla spaniel. Okay. It's very specific. So we're going to start with. I that mean, you got service. You've got tip and hack. You've got a brand new way of thinking about a classic. You, you're hitting like 
these marks mm-hmm. with this one. Uh, I think. Ooh, let's see which ones do I want to. Uh, There's some that you're just like I ain't. Got I know. It. I really can't. I can't. I. I, I just don't want to give. Uh, the color green is throughout your your cooking. There's so, a, a green is very much. I was like actually blue. No, no, no. Yeah. A lot of green. A lot of green. <laughs> blue food. Um, indeed. And there's a short verb and onion ragu paired with something I won't say. Uh, uh, possibly a cheddar tomato tart. Uh, yes. uh, a potato coconut curry. With, yeah. With, um, so I, I I like you're saying which your first book you're not t- you're not married to a, a pantry or a flavor profile you're going you're going for it no 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 my, I, and I don't I think with my food it's it's not Mediterranean it's not yeah. Persian it's not Southeast Asian uh, I I am first generation you know Iranian American and grew up eating um, that food and those flavors have very much kind of come into to my recipes but at the same time I've I've worked at very specific restaurants that are certainly don't have those those flavors and techniques and I eat out a lot and go to restaurants that also don't uh, fall under that those categories. So for me, it's about what I'm inspired by and and making sure that with each recipe, it's not just about developing a recipe that uh, works and tastes good, but also that will really kind of provide those those lessons that I think are so important. I can't. I cannot wait. Uh, ch- I, check this space. We'll we'll definitely be keeping up with the release schedule. L- lasagna will be on there. Yeah, it's not your not a lasagna bolognese per se because uh. I've, I've, I I kind of didn't. I did that. It's been done. Years. Yeah, I've do- people have done that. I've did that a few years ago. Uh, uh, are we doing homemade sheets? Uh, 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 I there will be a pasta section for okay, sure. I okay. mean, there'll be a pasta chapter. We love making pasta. Obviously, yes. it's smart. Plenty of Persian comfort food too. That will be kind of. I can't wait. Throughout. Let's 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 talk about your restaurant career. I mean, I, I definitely um, when you bring up restaurants, um, I I, I want to revisit you working at Shape and East in high school, which is remarkable in many ways. I, you you helped me get a reservation there to the cafe. So thank you, Andy, for, for making that intro. And I got to have a wonderful meal there and I shared it in a previous episode. What are they teaching you in the kitchen when you're, you know, 17 years old at Chez Panisse? Are you seeing things for the first time? Are your coworkers, you know, slipping you advice or stronger things? I mean, oh, I really have to go back uh, to, wow, uh, you know, f- 15, 15 plus years. Uh, I will say, and I've said this before, Chez Panisse was, um, that was, that was my education. That was my, it provided a foundational uh, education when it came to um, cooking and, and, and beyond, really. I mean, I, I remember so well um the beginning it was like how to how to how to prep an onion uh so for the for the line cooks to be able to slice or dice and how to peel and how many layers to remove and um uh how much uh, of the root onion you should cut not too much so it doesn't fall apart uh to how to prep mirepoix and how yeah. far to cook it and how it shouldn't really have too much uh, color. too much color at yeah. all, yeah. Yeah. but it should still be very, very soft. Um, uh, what are the elements that will go into uh, a braise? Um, how to make uh, a salsa verde and variations on that. How to toast spices, how to crush olives and pit them and to kind of retain its kind of craggly shape. Uh, how to make pasta, how to cook rice so you can see every kind of grain and uh, there's they stay fluffy and don't stick together. You want I to mean, see every grain of rice in yes, the bowl. Yes, You don't want to see any kind of like overlap, right? How to uh, bloom spices. Um, uh, it's really how to season meat, how to break down a chicken, how to trim the fat, just enough fat from from duck legs and duck breasts. I mean, it was uh, truly the greatest education and such a supportive um, group of people. Uh, I feel very, very lucky because I was so young and... I still haven't been able to sustain so many of the 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 friendships and relationships from that place. Yeah, and Cal was there. Peter Nell. Oh yeah, Cal was there. Yeah, uh, I saw Cal maybe I think it was uh, last spring. It was um, it was for Tamar Adler's uh, new book. I think it was last. Spring. Yeah, he was on the podcast around that time. Uh, yeah, had a great episode with Cal linked in the show notes. Yeah, yeah. he's he's a terrific uh, thinker, and he's maybe opening something in New Jersey. Oh no, he is. 
Yeah, he is. He told me a year ago, but he was working on a, a cool concept in New Jersey. He no, moved I'm to New so Jersey. So excited! I mean, he's so brilliant yeah, and brilliant thoughtful, guy. and um, you know, it was great to see him. And I, mean, I went back uh, to ship, and he's actually. For the New Year, I had a, a New Year's dinner there. I, w- I wasn't planning on it, but uh, of course, mm. I'm in Berkeley see, with the fam um, for the holidays, and bumped into um, the general manager there, Varun, and he's like, "What are you What are you doing? Do you want to come to the restaurant?" I'm like, nah, "That's so last minute." He's like, "Well, you know, no pull, but we can, we can we can we can manage." And I said, "Well, you know, I'd love to come actually for New Year's. I wanted a low key New Year's and." Just have like a nice dinner, and I went, and Alice was there. She's always there for New Year's, and oh wow, saw nice. her, and beautiful. She 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 uh, gently said like you know to put me to work for for something she's working on next October. So, so I'm like, hi, yes, tell me when, I fully way to like <laughs> capture the spirit of Alice Waters and how she she stays in the game. It's it's like it's like a level of like it's not operator that's a little rude, but she's definitely like in the mix with her with her people, but in a generous way too. And the truth is, I mean, there are there are people in my life uh, who I've been lucky to work with or meet, and if if they, if they ask me a favor or need me to support them in some way, yeah. like I I'm without a doubt like you tell me when and I'm, it's I'm a wonderful uh, trait and attribute of, of folks who work in our industry and the restaurant industry and the media industry will i'll say cookbook media not all media yeah. generosity of spirit yes um another restaurant question uh you went to Le bernard den with the host of how long gone jason stewart and chris black and i ask about this this dinner i don't know them you don't know them <laughs> they were just faking it exactly but it's funny they on their show they mentioned they, they were at Le bernard den and you know, i got them into shape and ease too oh i know you you're like <laughs> <laughs> their absolute bat phone plug for great restaurants. But uh, they, food is definitely a theme on that show. And 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 Jason writes a, a great column for taste. Um, and then Chris is kind of like not into food, but he is sneaky. What's the meal like at La Bernadette and the three of you? I just was like, this would be a pretty fun little party. Well, I, I had been and uh, I had been lucky to had been there a while back. And I, I asked them they were going to be in town. I said, like, you know, what restaurant do you want to go to? And, and Jason said, like, Oof, I, I, I would like to go to Le Brun. I said, okay, too, right, like that. great. Uh, and then also this, also I, Mel Ottenberg, who's the editor in chief of Interview, uh, reached out to me and said, like, we're we're featuring, uh, we're doing a shoot and uh, with Eric Repair uh, for his new book. Like, we'd love for you to interview him. So I interviewed Eric. Oh, right. And um, this, so I reached out to his team. I'm like, is there any way we can, we can, we can come to the restaurant and so we went we had a meal of course um chris went uh the vegetarian route yeah. uh no judgment i mean he, huh well yes pescatarian route or ve- veg full well veg? no no it's a it was all fish yeah so yeah. He, he didn't even he, he went vegetarian i mean yeah uh maybe a little judgment maybe a little judgment. little bit come but on. i love chris so uh, yeah they're good people and uh I mean, I always want that with them. Like the two of them, I want to be, <laughs> I want just the the best dinners, long dinners with the two of them. Cause we can talk about, I mean, they are professional talk. I mean, that's yeah, what they do. Definitely agree. And, um, I just like to chime in and, and <laughs> let them know when they're, when, when they're wrong, I should say. I love it. It's like, you're like the judge and like you have the bell and you're like the, you're like the tr- Alex Trebek of their yeah, yeah. conversation. <laughs> the, the moderator. Moderator. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's fun. And the food is pretty good. I would imagine. I mean, at Liberty, come on. It's, it's I mean, legendary. I, I will it. say I, w- I was very excited to interview Eric Repair and, um, yeah. and I think Liberty Dan is one of those places in the world, obviously in New York, where there's there's nowhere like it, and 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 there's no one really like Eric Repair. That's the thing. Like he really went a specific route, uh, not just with the restaurant, but just the fact that he really didn't decide to kind of take on all these different projects and open a bunch of different restaurants. He's and he and he's there. And it's amazing. Yep. He was there when we were when we were dining. Yeah. Um, and it's very, very special. Yeah. It's cool that you mentioned that. I mean, it really is. He's at the temple. He's the rabbi. He's the yes. Oman. He's like everything. Yes. He's like there hanging out, cooking, working the line. But he also lab tests all of his recipes in a sense that he's like really like in the like the, the, the ideation of the of the dishes that are delivered every night. It's a really fascinating approach. And yeah, he hasn't let celebrity like change the way he cooks. It's true. 
I mean, the thing that I was reminded about Lord Burton Dan, and I think like Matt, I, th- I could, I, I'll say, f- I imagine for both of us, we've been lucky to eat at a lot of great restaurants. Very fortunate. And I with Liberta Dan, well, I've been to, let's say, you know, four stars or mission start restaurants. Uh, you don't have to think about anything at that restaurant. I mean, you are halfway through the butter that they give you, this, del- this delicious, perfectly tempered butter. It's like, oh, no, that you're not, they're not waiting until you finish the butter. They are just swapping that out for a brand new butter. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> you can go through six of those butters and like the bread baskets coming around and you get three options, usually like a hard yeah. roll focaccia and like some kind of grainy, loafy, slicey thing from my yeah. memory like yeah. two, no, two no. summers ago. Exactly. And uh, it is always like you want to fill up on bread there. Yeah. You just want to do it. Kind of genius because like, you know, it's like a, a very like exquisite, expensive meal and luxurious meal. Um, and you're not leaving like, you're not getting crushed. No, you're nourished. You're nourished. Just, yeah. <laughs> to say it. But like maybe like a little under in some ways if you're like thinking about it for the cost. So like, yeah, fill up on that fucking bread. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> I want to ask you a little bit about, uh, I'm going to say the word food trends. I, I, I don't like, you know what I mean, but like, I don't like to say it, but you're, you're out and about, you're working on a cookbook, you're working on other projects, you're dining out a lot. And I really want to get a sense about, and I know you've thought about this, like what is happening right now that's really exciting you? This like maybe a sea change um, in, you know, restaurant culture, maybe food media, but we'll say restaurant culture. Mm. Well, I will say that I, I actually think it's a very exciting time in New York. You know, I think uh, it's natural for New Yorkers for us to be a little bit kind of jaded or uh, pessimistic. But I'd say there was a time pre-pandemic, you know, let's say for a couple of years, 2017 to, you know, before the pandemic, where I'm like, I I, I remember feeling like this does not feel exciting. There was like a repetitiveness uh, happening. Um, Not to say that it has entirely gone away, but right now, uh, I mean, it was it, what was one of the many unfortunate things that have, that happened because of the pandemic is the thousands of restaurants that closed in the city. And I'd say the the one great thing that happened because of that, it it allowed for this whole new crop of of talent, of young chefs, and kind of to rethink how they want to open up a space. And if they even want to open up a space, and maybe it's not a permanent brick or mortar. Sometimes it's, uh, I see more pop-ups than ever, uh, residencies, and that are doing foods that, you know, New York is, has always been unique in that we are able, we, we really have a range of cuisines. You can get all types of food. But I think what's happening now is even, uh, even more highly, highly regional cuisines, which is great. And I'm super excited about that. Um, we obviously, there's been a, a huge influx of like Szechuanese food for, oh, yeah. for many years now, but now we're seeing even more uh, types of, of, of different uh, regional um, Chinese food. Um, I think uh, I think restaurants are just wanting to to play more. Yeah. People, are, people are getting a little bit more weird and want it's a high stakes game but i think people are 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 making that risk and going meaning that you're not just doing populist cuisine but you're actually staying true to your your point of view you know so there's like chintan's group like unapologetic foods which is just says it in the name and it seems your statement is so true it's that people are are playful people are, are going for dishes um that maybe aren't going to hit every single person who comes in the door like I just went to Knox, okay, and I yeah. had you know I had the you know the the, the infamous soup or famous soup, um, and you know I didn't really like it. I won't order it again, but certainly they were cooking uncompromised food, and I enjoy uh, Filipino food in that way. I think it's cool to see. Uh, there's like and there's like dozens of these examples in New York. Have you been to Fox Face Natural? So um, I, I haven't, and and it's really on. I just saw that it was a Beard semifinalist, and it's it's on the top of my list. Mm-hmm. What's it like? Uh, you know, I I haven't been, and it's one of those things where it's like, uh, you know, I I I I get this way about um, certain chefs, restaurants, hey, where it's yeah, it's where it's like I. I'm like, there's this air of a little mystery, you know, and I, I'm like, that's that's always more appealing. I mean, I I love there are there are restaurants that have that are big and there are big groups that that I love and I go to, but I'm always interested in kind of the uh, the ones that 
are, I don't want to say quieter, but um, maybe just smaller. It's a smaller team. It's yeah. more intimate. It really feels like a family. Uh, but I, I really want to go. And I've gone in and I've tried to do day of, night of, like, multiple times and it hasn't happened so i have to be a little bit yeah, more you gotta organized smash that resi yeah. uh, alert and just be ready to exactly go. So that's dave santos right dave santos, yes yeah, yeah. uh lots of uh concepts he's run in the past like decade in new york and very uh very accomplished chef there i think uh i mean i also think like with design i think spaces are just becoming uh more fun uh people want to ha have a good time. I don't think that has changed. I think people are just willing to uh, change things up and put themselves in different situations and willing to stand up or sit down. Or uh, I think we, the one thing that New Yorkers won't put up with is bad food. And I think 100. there's, uh, there's better food than ever right and now. And the margin the of error is much, it's much lower and, and uh, it certainly um, is a highway or act with these restaurants doing, doing their own thing. Um, you went to Colonel uh, Steve L's new place, the founder of Chipotle. I did. I don't even think it's open. Yet. Oh, it's not even open yet. Yeah, so it was a. It was a. It was a. It was a, a friends and family. Friends and family I think. Like soft um, opening. I'm, I, don't, I don't. I don't know him personally. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, uh, and yeah, and I went, and it was. It was very interesting. I mean, I've never. Uh, I re I'm very, it's very interesting what they're doing. It's it's so different than what I do, yeah. and um, but to see them make really delicious food and um you know the goal is that i think it's is like a scalable operations with like, using automation yes using, i mean like, I, there, there are people there but sure. there is definitely well i, I hope so <laughs> there, there are there are there are there are a couple of people there from uh from what i witnessed but there's definitely a machine a robotic arm that yes. you see in like 1998 ford like like plant videos, you know, like <laughs> making the cars with the arms. But but it is, I mean, it's not a great comparison, but like it made me think of um, super, super technical fine dining restaurants, which yeah. you, you would never think to put like something like this where it's like, maybe people don't like this term, but like kind of this fast casual model that's using technology and compared to like fine dining. But I think... Uh, what can happen is like there's an exactness to both and i have a lot of respect for that um uh, that is not something that i necessarily want to do uh i i find beauty in the kind of irregularity and and the kind of the the mishaps and i think those are uh the points where you can learn a lot in in cooking but uh, for the people who can do that i'm like you know that's amazing it is amazing you think about sweet green you're literally hitting the button on your phone and you're walking to it and picking up in the the wooden you know the rows of, of salads and if it got to you from a human or got to you from a robotic arm mm -hmm. maybe less material yes as long as it's good it's just very interesting to talk to a chef about the way a food cannot be human <laughs> <laughs> it seems freaky as fuck to me i mean it, it, i feel like I think actually throughout my 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 book, the cook you want to be was like I I want people to use less tools. I want people yeah. to use less technology. I want people yeah. to use their hands more. Uh, I think uh, it's it's uh, it's for me it's it's a way to interact with the food and really have a better understanding of it. We cover a lot of founders' journeys and stories on here, and a lot of um, grocery store items in NCPG. And Andy, are there any new products that you're cooking with? Um, from new founders and new products that you that you enjoy that you want to like give a little uh, shout to because I think it's just an exciting time for new products right now. No, you're 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 absolutely right. Uh, I mean, this is certainly not new, but I feel like I have to shout it out because I yeah think I eat it five times a week. Uh, Fishwife. Yeah, I mean that's my lunch like it's, it's five times a week. A great I product. Mean, everything from like their smoked salmon, their their smoked. Uh, cod, like I, I'm eating that uh, yeah. with you know, a little bit of mustard mayonnaise, lots of lemon juice or vinegar, some herbs, and oh, yeah, it's um, beautiful. It's my go-to. Um, where else? Um, um, I know your scent Ap stuff too. A no, a Aplos. Sorry, I cut you off. I'll let you. No, uh, Aplos. I would say I've been uh, Aplos and um, and Gia. You know my uh, my I drink. Uh, alcohol my partner my partner doesn't so uh it's it's good to kind of have something that isn't just like juice and sparkling water yeah. <laughs> so yeah. uh, we both take advantage of that um you know most nights yeah most days and nights of the week yeah so beverage is definitely a cool category we covered a lot yeah. what about probiotic sodas are you into those 
Poppy and um, Olipop? Uh, well, there is one. Uh, it's not probiotic, though. Um, and not new, but uh, I think they're slowly, people are getting becoming more aware of it. It's uh, something and nothing. Oh, I don't know that one. Uh, yeah, it's a great... Um, I wouldn't even want to just the sp- sparkling water. Like yeah, use use sparkling and water. Nothing. Something and nothing. Something oh. nothing. Something like something that. like that. Yeah, yeah. something yeah. like yeah. or nothing like that. Yeah. Well, well, well <laughs> you know what? I love I love to try it. Like I'm gonna go down. I'm gonna go look at that, at that brand. It's thanks for sharing those products. I think it's cool to to hear what you're cooking with. On this is taste. We ask guests about their discerning taste. So to close this interview, here's a little rapid fire, fast and furious taste check. Andy, are you ready? Uh somewhat anxious, but yes. Please go ahead. <laughs> Let's do this. The best fruit. Oh my god! I feel like you can't ask me that. Like I feel like painful. I know painful. Um, yeah. you know what? I'm gonna be a little bit of a cheater. We're we're middle of winter. What's the best thing to eat? Best fruit to eat in winter is citrus. So I'm gonna say, um, kishu, 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 kishu. Yeah. Very special. If you don't know it, uh, tiny, 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 smaller than a golf ball size, um, Kishu um, tangerines. Yep. Um, hard to find, but you can order them. Um, there's a, uh, a farm on in Ojai. This is so not rapid fire, but Tangerine Man. Do tangerineman.com oh, yeah. and you can order it and they're amazing. Yeah, Ojai, citrus season, late Jan, into Feb. Mm. Do you like you like pixies? I love pixies. Pixies. Yeah. What about sumos? Love sumos. Yeah, a little, a little overrated. I'm I, I'm a sumo fan. It's in the logo of our uh, of our podcast here. But yeah. I, I love sumos though. No, I do love sumos. I love I love uh, caracaras. Caracaras. Uh, yeah. Um, the worst vegetable. Green bell peppers. Like always. I've 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 said it for my whole life. I mean, yeah. That it's just like I eat everything. I'm not a picky eater at all. And I will eat a green bell pepper, but I just won't ever buy it. And reds are okay, though? Yeah. Sweetness of reds. But, yeah, you know, how do the, I mean, this is like... A, I don't like a raw bell pepper, period. I mean, but a red pepper when, like, really kind of charred and burnished and it has it becomes sweet and smoky and has, like, a nice, nice jammy flesh. Cooks. Yeah. It's, it's, it's triggering when the Iron Chef host in Japan eats the bell pepper. <laughs> I, I always feel a little, like, gag reflex hit me. I'm with you on that one. Yeah. Um, uh, why do you think green peppers made it onto pizza? It seems just, I don't understand. It was an era. I don't think, <laughs> I don't even, I don't even think of, like people do that anymore. I mean, really? that's a great question. Mm, it, it makes me think of like, like early nineties, eighties. Oh, like, I want to know thing? green bell peppers on pizza. It was part of my childhood. We will, we'll, we'll dig into that on taste. The best dessert. Oh, and for someone who says, like, I'm not a dessert person, I am a dessert person. Well, I'll say generally it's like a fruit based dessert. I really love like a, 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 a fruit tart, like just a really good, any kind of fruit tart, um, a rhubarb tart. Um, but at the same time, like, this is not a fruit dessert. I love a milfui. Yeah. I love a flaky dessert. I was going to wonder flaky about pastry. the tart, the way the tart is presented and not like a crostata, but more of a tart. A tart, yeah. I, 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 I generally want like a very kind of classic flaky dough. Like that's that's kind of my 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 Achilles heel. Your favorite American fast food chain? In and out. Very fast answer. In-N-Out. I'm just gonna leave it. Let it hang there. In and out, number one. Your favorite Bay Area restaurant? I guess I guess Chez Panisse will take that out of the equation because yeah. Let's remove Chez Panisse. Um, that changes a lot. I mean, I, I, I have. It's hard. I mean, that's that's. Uh, I've been in New York for 16 years, but uh, I'm from I'm from the Bay. I'm gonna name a couple restaurants okay, that I'm going to. Like so yeah. Rose Pizzeria is amazing, really, really good pizza in the East Bay. Cheeseboard is a is a staple in yep. other pizzeria. Um, I love Tacubaya for Mexican, um, and yeah, that, that I'll, your favorite I'll three, favorite four. Yeah, yeah. Were you ever a fan of Fenton's growing up? Love Fenton's. Yeah, yeah. I, I just went there. I just yeah. it's top of mind for yeah. me. Fenton's yeah. is great. Yeah. Um. Okay. Brace. Your favorite cookbook of all time. Oof. Listener, there's a pained face, rubbing of the face. Andy is really. He's turning a little red. He's shaking his head and he's not happy. No, I'm not happy. It's not that I'm not happy. It's like <laughs> you know, I I um. 
I I I I I can I can tell you the ones that were the most impactful uh, to me, uh, and <laughs> you're like you're terrible at this. I mean, you're fine. <laughs> like, it's good. Get a pass. You uh, a great I mean, sport. I think Zuni Cafe is a, a very obvious choice. Um, I mean, just in so much information, so much technique. It really is a book that I thought a lot about um, when I was writing my book. Um, I, it's hard for me not to mention Nigel Slater, Tender, Ripe, uh, a cook's book. I mean, uh, uh, Eat, like any of his books. I have. I, I think I have all of his books. I think uh, the thing with him, it's it's less about uh, getting really nitty gritty on making the exact recipe, but um, uh, I think so much of it is more of like bringing certain flavors together and his voice. I mean, he really is an famously, incredible writer. Famously, famously, famously does not do press. I've interviewed... Many people who've been famously like interview shy have been thankful. I've tried to interview Nigel. We publish Nigel here yes. and will not do any press. So it's interesting. Yeah, um, I love that you say that because he's he's singular for sure. There is a cookbook uh, uh, that people. Uh, it's it's. Uh, I'm thinking like oh, so many of these cookbooks that I love are like cookery books, and they're and they're they're from the UK. <laughs> but uh, it's called Near and Far, and uh, it's. It's not a it's not a big book. Um, really talented young um, chef and writer. Uh, I think I'm drawn it, when I think when naming looking at these three authors. I'm really thinking about the thing that it's. I shouldn't mention my mentor and and friend and another uh, amazing author, David Tennis. Yeah. I I think of these people because it's it's not all of these books have recipes for or photos for every recipe, but they have a lot of information. There's a lot of information and um, I find uh, they're presented in a well-packaged way and um, I learned so much from them. So those, those, yeah, those, those are, are great. Uh, you've, you mentioned so many names that we recognize as our, our, our best and brightest. And I know asking you for one was impossible yeah. and you, you did not take the challenge. Yeah, yeah, you, no. you did three. <laughs> I think we had to shout out Lorena Jones too, by the way, your editor. Oh my God. Of the, course. Gotta, gotta just say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, uh, was a huge part of, um, my book and, um, was a huge supporter and, and I know she, she continues to base. So. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't let that pass. Okay. A few more, a, a favorite recent cookbook discovery. This is something that maybe hmm. landed on your desk, landed in your phone, yeah. things that you've looked at. I'll mention two that are very recent. Um, Samantha sent abroad. I think she's just yeah. like, she's so talented. Um, I mean, I it's oh, what I was gonna say is like oh, I don't remember her ever uh, being able to like eat her her her, her sweets, uh, but she's an incredible baker, incredible cook, also just one of the greatest humans. She has such a good personality. I was lucky to uh, work with her uh, a decent amount um, as uh, when she uh, on sets when she was food styling when I was at uh, Bon Appetit. Um, she's just so talented. She really can do um, so many different things. Uh, and also uh, Nick Sharma's new book. Yeah. Uh, Veg. Table. Yeah, I mean vegetable. that's that was that's like an easy one that uh, obviously is going to pull me in. I love my vegetables, and he's such a he's yeah. such a thinker and very, will very go deep. Bright. And uh, I love that. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful picks there. A few more. Your favorite city outside America to visit for food. You are rolling your eyes. These are such basic. No, 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 these are no, like no, basic no, no, questions. No, 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 not rolling. My, it's just, it's just. No, no I these mean, are, I, I'm, I'm. Paris or Mexico City. Paris, Mexico. You are a great sport. You're, yeah, yeah. You're, those are good picks. Yeah. I don't, you don't need to unpack those. Those are really good picks. Um, this I want you to think about. Okay. And we can take a pause. We can do the magical editing and and but a cuisine you would like to learn more about. I've two. Fair. Uh, Listener, that was a twenty-eight second pause. <laughs> that will probably be edited a little bit. Malaysian. Okay. Afghan. Okay. Let's unpack it a bit. Okay, so for Malaysian, what do you know about Malaysian cuisine that you that you kind of like? What's the baseline? Well, I have a, I have a a good under, I have a 
decent understanding of, of, of cuisines in surrounding countries. But in Malaysia, I, I, I've only eaten it. I haven't ever cooked it. And I would love to learn more and be more comfortable where I could actually play with some of the ingredients and the kind of the dried anchovies and incorporating that and, um, and the sambal and like really, really playing around and, and yeah. making my own. Like that is something I love. It is, it, it from my experience, it's a cuisine where you know, it's 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 not subtle in any way. Um, the merging of a Southeast Asia and East Asia. Yes. Yeah. And, um, and yeah. I love the food. And so I'm very curious to kind of have a better understanding of of the techniques and the ingredients. Um, uh, I've, I've certainly had like nasi lemak and yeah, but I want to kind of have a, a broader. I love that answer. And then with Afghan, you know, it's a cuisine that I believe gets conflated with other Mm -hmm. you know, regions and, but it has a crystallized uh, point of view and culture, obviously. Mm -hmm. But what draws you to Afghan cuisine? Well, I, what draws me is the fact that uh, it, it, you'll see like there's Indian influence, yeah. there's, there's obviously influence from, from Iran. Um, it's uh, uh, from Turkey. I think uh, while there's similar similarities, I'm sure to the food that I grew up with, Iranian food, I think what's so interesting about Afghan food, it it is just, it's all over the place. Yeah. I mean, they do, they have incredible rice dishes and stews that, that, are, that are similar to um, like, let's say Iranian food and, and, and Indian food, but then also they do, they do monti and there's many, many variations of monti, the, the dumplings, but, you know, they will um, have them filled with, um, let's say spiced lamb and then, cover that dumpling that's been steamed or boiled with uh, thinned out yogurt and then chili oil. And I'm just like, wait, what's happening here? So um, I would just want to eat more of it and try more of it. And uh, I also think, uh, 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 unfortunately, I, I think with uh, countries and cultures that have gone through a lot of hardships, uh, what can what of, oftentimes happen is that they have a, a very interesting cuisine. Oh my goodness, what a well uh, well said statement about a cuisine that is in multitudes. And just to add that, like you know, Afghanistan, we we've the the, the world's greatest apricots mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and and nuts. Yes, uh, you know, like oh, yeah. almonds, pistachios, yes, and, and different forms and like a roasting technique that's different than you might get you know, in parts of uh, California. I, I will say not to go on a t too much yeah. of a tangent. I, uh, I spent time in Lebanon. I, uh, the first time I went for fun, the second time I, I, I went to, to do a story on uh, Kamal Muziak of, of Taula and in, in, in Beirut, incredible restaurateur. And, um, and I would say I had, I had such amazing food in Lebanon, but the food that uh, I remember most was in the in Burj Hamoud, which was uh, the Armenian neighborhood, and I also feel that way about Armenia and that, and yeah. that cuisine. It's like for for the people in a culture that has have gone through a lot, they definitely have uh, such such uh, interesting cuisine. Last one, your favorite sandwich? I mean, uh, does it have to be like a recognizable sandwich or like no. what I put in my sandwich? No rules, no rules. Oh, okay, like no rules. This what is, is your sandwich? This is something that it's like childhood. It's like, and people are like, "Whoa, this is." I wasn't gonna think this, but it's like um, a sesame sesame roll, um, Calabrian mayonnaise like mixture, like just like we're doing like an Italian sub yeah. basically, uh, and then. Um, mustard which maybe some people want dijon mustard Great. uh thinly slice martadella uh turkey but uh chop it up with iceberg lettuce vinegar salt um pepper um uh and potato chips uh tomato um onions raw onions uh, and that's it so w wonderful, <laughs> it's a precise answer. When you say chop it up, you're chopping the meat up? Yeah, just chop the whole thing up, like doing a chopped meat salad. So you're chopping, a, it's basically a chopped salad, exactly. It's a yeah, chopped salad yeah. that's been, but you've got Calabrian mayo and a little, and you've got Dijon mustard. But it's like a chopped salad sandwich. Yeah. Oh, Andy, <laughs> it's lunchtime. I'm so, this is amazing. Andy Bergani, this has been such a treat. Thank you so much for joining This Is Taste. Thank you so much, Matt. Very happy to be back.
Christian Reynoso, welcome to This Is Taste. How are you doing? I'm good. Thanks for having me, Matt. Absolutely. We you've written some terrific, terrific stories for Taste, and and when I have you, when you're next time in New York, we'll have you in the studio, and I would love to do a full full um, episode with you. But I really wanted to get a sense of this piece that you wrote about Zuni Cafe, the cookbook. Tell us first to you, what's your experience with Zuni Cafe? Um, well, I, I started working there in 2015, um, but it's a, it's a restaurant that I, you know, definitely had known about and had been to, I'd actually worked with one of the ex chef de cuisines at this wine bar in Oakland. And, uh, she had worked there for, I think upwards of like a decade almost and had just left and to do her own thing. And she was kind of like uh, Judy Rogers, like protege in a way. So it kind of felt like I was kind of getting gl this glimpse into the cuisine at Zuni without like having to actually work there. But then at some point, uh, she actually got asked to come back to the restaurant. And then in turn, she asked me to, if I wanted to work there. And so I, you know, I didn't have to apply or, or, or anything like that really. I just, I was kind of, I had this like really easy into the restaurant, which was really cool. Um, and then I worked there for five years up until the pandemic. And yeah, it was just like this really awesome integral experience for me. Like it was, I learned so much there about cooking, even though I had been cooking for a while, I learned about seasonality. I learned about you know writing menus. I I learned to manage people, uh, line cooks, and yeah, it was it was really really awesome. So Christian, five years is a long time to work at a restaurant and really like capture the, you know you really get the rhythm of how service works. And you you write so beautifully in the piece about how the cookbook that Judy Rogers wrote with many others, but was the author, and you know she had passed before you even worked there, but still this book was used as almost a tool to inform the service and style of this iconic restaurant. So unique for a cookbook to actually do that. It was so unique because um, it's a place of its own, but Judy left such a, such a mark on the restaurant. And I think when you think of Zuni Cafe, it's really hard not to separate Judy from the restaurant, even though she has passed and you know when i started there uh it she had just passed away i think a year and a half before uh, and it was yeah it was i think it was still palpable like it felt like she you know it was on everybody's mind in a way um and you know when i first started there people would you know ask me if i knew who judy was and i was like yeah of course i've heard of her um yeah it was just like it was it's just really hard to separate the restaurant from her uh, at that point. And even though now I think of Zuni in a much bigger way, I think of it as, a, as some of all of its parts and how it's evolved over time. Um, but it's, yeah, the book is, has, was just really kind of monumental and Bible-like for me and my experience there. Yeah. So that when you say Bible-like, I mean, are you as, as a, as, as somebody working line, are you just reading through it in a different way than like a general consumer and actually in like using some of the techniques in the book on the line and you're and you write about how you would work through recipes through the course of your time there it's just a remarkable thing for a restaurant cookbook to do this it is yeah i would do homework i would uh i would like choose a section in the book to read every day during, before my shift um you know whether that means like a page or a recipe or something that i knew that was you know, in season or in the walk-ins that we were probably going to use at some point. And I would try to get a glimpse into, you know, how historically like Judy and the restaurant had, you know, prepared those ingredients. Um, yeah, it was just, uh, it was just a really cool reference that, you know, me and my peers and the other line cooks at the time, we would talk about like, Hey, did you like read that section about, you know, figs and how, how she describes them and how cool that was or did you read the intro to the book and how judy like started you know started her cooking career and like how you know how just how beautiful that was and um it was it was really cool how uh at the time i was i was working with cooks that 
and chefs and the whole staff there that either were had worked with her for many years um, or were new and were trying to kind of get a glimpse into her psyche in a way. Let me ask you about um, going back and writing this piece. And and you did, again, thank you for doing it. It was I know we worked on it for for a little while and you just did a terrific job. What is it like going back to this book? You know, you write about how you had to leave the restaurant during the pandemic when it closed. Um, for that period, and and really, that must have been difficult. But like, just going back and and re- re- recounting this text, this book, but also speaking to some of the great alumni who worked at the restaurant, that must have been cathartic in a in a sense. Um, I I mean, I really enjoyed writing this piece uh, because I. You know, after after you work somewhere for five years, I feel like you got to do something. You either are going to stay there forever or you are going to move on and do something else. And I had wanted to, I had been thinking about what was next and then the pandemic happened. And so it kind of made this decision for me. So what's it like today dining at Zuni Cafe yourself? You you write about, you had you had a wedding celebration there, which I think is a nice detail. And, and I don't know how much you go there now. I mean, you're a busy person, but... What's it like dining there now for you that after having worked there for five years? Um, well, actually, I moved to L.A. a few months ago, so I don't get to go um, on a whim. When I was in San Francisco and when I go back, uh, it's always it's always just it feels like going back to, you know, it's kind of cheesy, but it feels like going back to this like second home. And uh, I feel just automatically very warm and comfortable there. And it's wild. It's it's crazy how uh, much of the staff is still there that I worked with and that Judy worked with. And yeah, it's just a it's a really kind of uh, nostalgic, weird feeling for me. What what are you ordering when you're there? What what's the cuisine like these days? I love the margarita there, which I. Th- don't know if a lot of people like really like associate uh zuni with the margarita for some reason but it feels very zuni to me um it's served up it's strong it's delicious um it's like this really chic margarita that i love or if it's like if it's like later in the spring they make uh uh vindorange which is like this fortified white wine with like a little bit of vanilla and it's made with like bitter oranges and other citrus and it's served on the rocks. It's really delicious. Um, food wise, I you know I love I love to order the Caesar with extra croutons. Uh, croutons are almost as good as the rest of the salad on that on that dish. Uh, I will always order the piccolo frito, whatever it is, which is like a collection of little fried things and some sort of sauce usually. And, you know, it's kind of, it's very classic, but I love the espresso granita there. It's just, it's kind of a perfect dessert to me. It's, it's, it's refreshing. It's light. It's simple. It's like, it's like having an espresso shot, but in dessert form. Right. But still the iciness will get you, uh, it's that resets the palate. Love that. Um, we've avoided talking about the chicken, which I think is like a bit of a, obviously you made like 15,000 of those, I'm sure while working there, but I'm sure it still is pretty good. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's iconic. It's, uh, it's brine for a couple of days. It's, it's succulent. It's really smoky and it's kind of extra chickeny from the oven because it's just, the oven's just got this like patina of like roast chicken flavor in there. And the bread salad is maybe maybe my favorite part of it, which is, you know, if you've never had it, it's like, I'm sure you've had it, Matt, but it's like, it's, you know, it's got scallions and plumped currants and garlic. And it's like bread that's been torn and grilled first and then stuffed into this like six pan that you, that's drenched in, you know, chicken stock and chicken fat and vinaigrette and tossed with mustard greens. It's, it's really, really good. A lot of people don't know that you can actually order that just by itself it's kind of like one of the only things that's like kind of a secret menu there you can just order the bread salad wow i'm embarrassed i've not been to zuni i just went to chez panisse for the first time i i I tend to stick in the east bay when i'm in the area and i just haven't had a chance to actually make it to zuni cafe but you know i will um hopefully this year it's on my list of places to visit and and this piece is just so so special and i I really appreciate you writing it yeah thank you so much I, i i had a blast writing it it was 
yeah, it was like uh, really cool to think about like my experience there. Well, I, w- I can't let you go without asking about your column that you write for the for the San Francisco Chronicle. You also write for Epicurious and other places. And I, your journalism is is amazing. I, I, I think you're such a talent and I just love working with you in pieces. Thank you. Yeah, my column, my column is, uh, it's, it comes out every other week and it's a recipe story. It's usually based on what I'm actually cooking at home, what I actually want to eat. And it's, it's got this seasonal angle. So we'll do, you know, something with, I did something with Meyer lemons last week. It was like this Meyer lemon poppy seed loaf cake, um, where I like chop up whole Meyer lemon and fold it into the cake batter and bake it and it's super lemony, super poppy CD. It's delicious. Um, so I try to keep that really personal and simple and seasonal. Um, and it's been, I actually started writing that right before I, uh, finished at Zuni or in 2020 when I had to stop working there because of the pandemic. So, um, it really kind of pushed me to keep writing and keep moving in this like food writing world. And well, Christian Reynoso, thank you for joining. This is taste. Of course. Thanks, Matt. This is Taste is hosted by Eliza Abarbanel and me, Matt Rodbar. The show is produced by Shalia Harris and Pat Stango and edited by Clayton Gumbert. Theme music by Steve Rydell. Visit Taste online at tastecooking.com and make sure to subscribe to our newsletter for updates on all cool things that are happening. 